What animals ruled the Earth before dinosaurs? Most people think that our precursors on the planet were only the dinosaurs, and that was where life on Earth began. Most people, in fact, would be wrong. You see, the dinosaurs were not the first species to inhabit our world. In fact, there was a whole era of life before the dinosaurs. That's why, in today's video, we're going to take a deep dive into this era of life and look at what preceded our predecessors. So, without further ado, let's get right into it. So then, a bit of background. The era of the dinosaurs was known as the Mesozoic Era. What most people don't actually know is that this was preceded by what's known as the Paleozoic Era. And it's not like this era was unknown. It spanned an immense amount of time, from 541 million years ago to 252 million years ago. It was divided into six periods, which are namely the Cambrian period, Ordovician period, Silurian period, Devonian period, Carboniferous period, and Permian period. This time was an era of great change and development where beings transitioned from single-celled organisms to complex multicellular species, laying the foundation for the evolution of life on Earth. Terrestrial Animals Let's start by going through some of the terrestrial animals that inhabited the Earth in the era before the dinosaurs. There's the synapsids, which were a group of early mammal-like reptiles that came in various forms ranging from small insectivores to large herbivores. They were characterized by the single opening behind each of their eye sockets, which allowed for very powerful jaw muscles. These animals played a large role in the evolution of terrestrial vertebrates, eventually going on to give rise to mammals. Another similar group of animals is the pelicosaurs. These are considered a subgroup of synapsids and stand out with the sizable sail-like structure on their backs, likely used for thermoregulation purposes. The sail was made of skin stretched over a sequence of bony spines that ran along the back of the creature. Perhaps the most popular pelicosaur is the Dimetrodon, a large apex predator with a sail that could reach up to 2 meters 6 .6 feet in height. The reason we don't really see any animals of this kind around today is that during the end of the Paleozoic era, pelicosaurs met their extinction. Apart from them are your regular everyday insects. However, these insects weren't exactly regular. You see, during the Paleozoic era, insects had already been well-established life forms that had gone through significant diversification. The insects of the Paleozoic era while having relatively simple body structures compared to their modern counterparts, often exhibited giantism, making them much larger than their modern counterparts. For example, Meganeuropus permiana, a giant dragonfly-like insect, had wingspans that could exceed 70 centimeters, 28 inches. Finally, and most importantly, are the archosaurs. This is the group that gave rise to the future dinosaurs. Also what we know today as crocodilians and birds, they are characterized by several key features, including upright posture, advanced respiratory systems, and usually socketed teeth, making them apex predators in their ecosystems. Today, archosaurs are represented by crocodiles, crocodilia, and birds, aves. Marine Animals Now, let's shift gears and take a look at the marine wildlife that roamed the Paleozoic era. Interestingly, there actually seem to have been more marine groups of animals in this period than terrestrial ones. There were trilobites, a diverse group of marine arthropods with a distinctive three-lobed body structure that earned them their name. Like modern arthropods, Trilobites molted as they grew. They would shed their old exoskeleton and grow a new, larger one. You've seen this behavior in modern-day snakes, but you probably didn't see it coming in a marine arthropod. Alas, 
the trilobites did not survive the mass extinction event at the end of the Paleozoic era. Now, here's an especially interesting one for you. Eurypterids, also known as sea scorpions. These were a group of ancient aquatic arthropods that had long, segmented bodies with a distinct tail spine that made it look like a cross between a lobster and a scorpion. These animals came in a variety of sizes, with some species being limited to around 10 centimeters or 4 inches, while others, like the massive Jackalopterus, were among the largest marine arthropods ever recorded, with lengths upwards of 2 meters (6.5 feet). That's the length of a Cayman crocodile. Pretty scary, right? Next up, we have ammonoids, which were a diverse and highly successful group of marine mollusks known for their coiled, chambered shells. When you think of a chambered nautilus with its hypnotizing spiral shells, you're thinking of ammonoids. They are also closely related to modern-day cephalopods such as squids, octopi, and cuttlefish. Then there were the brachiopods a group of marine invertebrates that have been present on Earth for hundreds of millions of years. People often mix them up with clams, but this is actually a distinct group with its own characteristics. You see, unlike clams, brachiopods exhibit what is known as bilateral symmetry along the hinge line. Also, they possess a unique feeding organ called a lophophore for filter feeding which is a specialized structure that consists of tentacles surrounding the mouth. Interestingly, brachiopods are one of the only groups on this list that are still around today, though of course they're not nearly as abundant as they used to be. Next are crinoids, known to the common man as sea lilies. These are some truly fascinating creatures with some unique characteristics that set them apart. Crinoids are made of a central body called the calyx attached to a stem consisting of numerous plates stacked together. They have long feathery arms that extend outwards from the calyx, which are used for filter feeding. This is another group that is still around today, though again not nearly as abundantly as during the Paleozoic era. Bryozoans, also known as moss animals, are a group of aquatic invertebrates that form colonies of tiny, filter-feeding individuals. They might be tiny, but they're not insignificant as they play crucial roles in the marine ecosystem. Bryozoans are colonial animals, meaning they form large, interconnected groups of individual organisms called zooids that work together as a single unit. Some bryozoans even have symbiotic relationships with other organisms. For example, some species host small crustaceans or worms within their colonies. Imagine a small sea animal symbiotically controlling a colony of bryozoans. Apart from all these, there were the early primitive species of fish that existed during the Paleozoic era. These fish can be broadly categorized into two main groups. Agnathans, jawless fish, and nathostomes, jawed fish. Agnathans are considered some of the earliest vertebrates and include organisms like lampreys and hagfishes. They lacked true jaws and had circular toothed mouths used for suction feeding. Nathostomes are characterized by the presence of true jaws and more sophisticated feeding mechanisms. Like their kin today, many early fish relied on gills for respiration, extracting oxygen from the water to breathe. Some examples of primitive fish from this era include ostracoderms, placoderms, lungfish, and coelacanths. Amphibians Finally, let's take a look at some of the amphibians that lived before the dinosaurs. The first amphibians appeared during this era and had evolved from thin-lobed fish, which had developed certain adaptations for life in shallow, oxygen-poor waters. Early amphibians had a mix of fish-like and amphibian-like characteristics. They typically had limbs with digits, a well-developed neck, and specialized respiratory structures for breathing air. Tiktaalik rosé, a fossil discovered in Arctic Canada, is often considered a transitional form between fish and amphibians 
and is believed to have been an important step in the evolution of early amphibians. They even played a significant role in the evolution of tetrapods, four-legged vertebrates. Their adaptations for life on land laid the groundwork for the later diversification of reptiles, birds, and mammals. Of course, some of the lineages of early amphibians gave rise to the amphibians we know and love today, like frogs, salamanders, and cassilians. So now you know, those were some of the animals that dominated the planet before the dinosaurs ever came about. And we owe a lot of our current wildlife and ecology to these very animals. We hope you learned something new today. If you have any comments or questions, feel free to leave them down below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on notifications to stay up to date on videos like this. See you next time.